Okay, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to take advantage of some of the animation features within Blender Render. And what we're going to do, we're going to create some animated effects with this simple object. And once we have that, then we'll take that effect and we'll move it back into the game engine so we can put it under keyboard control or mouse control or something like that. And so the type of animation we're going to create is going to be the changing of the shape of the object itself, either morphing it or something, not this kind of animation. This would, you know, you can do keyframe animations, which you should be well familiar with by moving things along. But we're going to change the shape of the object. So the first thing we'll do is we'll use shape keys. And the way to do that is come up here to the upside down triangle button, and we'll click that. And with this object selected, I'm just going to come over here to shape keys right here in this menu, and I'm going to press this plus button three times. And so what that does, it first of all gives me the original shape is going to be what this key is all about that says basis. And then the shapes that we want to change it to are going to be in, the, are in these keys themselves. So we won't modify this basis shape at all. So I'm going to go over here to key 1. That will be the first shape that I actually change. In order for this to work, you actually have to be in edit mode. And what we'll do is a very simple change. I'll go into edit mode with the tab key. And then I'm going to press S and I'm simply going to scale it up. And then I'm going to left click it, and, and then I'm going to leave edit mode. All right, that's all I've done. I've scaled it in edit mode. Well, I've come over here, and even though it's on key one, I don't see any real change in shape. It still looks like this original one here. But however, if you notice this number 0, 0.000, that tells you that that's the original position back here. So for this shape, for key number one, I have to come down here and change this. And if I change it, you notice here, if I go all the way up to 1, that means that it's now the complete shape that I had just changed that object to. I can actually move this up. It won't matter if I move it up because I'm not changing the, the location. I'm just changing the shape. And if I move it back down, you can see it brings it back down to its original form. And you can see the number is changing here as well. All right. So I'll just bring it back down to the original shape, knowing that we can change this at any time. Then I'm going to go up to key 2. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back into edit mode, and then I'm on the global axis. I'm going to say I'm going to scale it on Y. So I'll press S followed by Y, and I'm just going to scale it here, maybe a little bit more, S, Y, scale it like that. And I'm going to leave edit mode. Same thing, it returns back to that original shape, which is the same as the basis shape. But say if I come down here and I change it, there's that shape here like this. All right, so I have the original shape, and then I have this shape, and then I have this shape. Now notice what happened there. It's kind of morphing between the two. If I have that one at 100% and this one now at 100%, it reflects a combination of the two shapes. If I take this one out, which was just a scaling of X, Y, and Z, then you can see it just scales it back down like that. All right, so that should give you a pretty good idea of what we're doing there. But now what we need to do is we need to be able to set keyframes for this so we can change it within the action editor and then we can use that within the game engine. So I'm going to need to come over here and grab another window and position my mouse over the little triangle here, the little slanted lines, left click and I'll just move my mouse up and open up another window. Now I come down here and I want to grab the dope sheet right here. And then within the dope sheet I have to click this button dope sheet and change it over to the action editor. Well actually in this case I'll change it to the shape key editor. We'll, we'll be using the action key editor soon, but I'll go to the shape key editor. And there are my two keys. There's key one and key two. Well, my cursor on the timeline is position C is frame number one. It's also indicated frame number one right there. But if I was to suddenly change this shape, this value in here, and I'll do that, I'll change it up to halfway its half its size. It set keyframes for that shape. And key two is already set because key two I had set at one like this. So if I move up, say, to frame 50, and if I change this shape, I'll drop it down like that, and it changes those keyframes there. And if I come back here and I play this animation with Alt A, well, you'll see nothing happens because notice here there's a keyframe for key one, but no keyframe on key 1 here, no keyframe on key 2, but a keyframe here. So you need a keyframe for each. All right, so I come back up here to this frame, frame 50, and for key 1, I'm also going to change its shape, and then I'll go back, move, uh, 
right the down arrow key back to here. I'm going to change that shape and see how it sets a keyframe there. Now I have keyframes, so if I was to play this in the window, now you can actually see the changing of the shape between the two keyframes. All right, and see now this is called in here. It's called key action. And that's the nice thing about this is if you're in the dope sheet, notice you don't have a data block, meaning you don't have a way to add something to the scene. And in this case, if I look back to the shape key editor. If, if I wanted to add another data block, I could click the plus button and give it a new name in here and then create a new animation sequence. But for the moment, I'm just going to pick this one called key action like this and save it in here. So it's it's set in here and it's known as key action. So now let's switch over to the game engine. Alright, so we have key action. Let's just verify. We press all day. It just does that change like this. Okay, so now within the game engine, what I want to be able to do is I'm going to go get the logic bricks. So go over to game logic and I'll just use some basic logic. Let's just kind of twist this around a little bit so I can see it in the light. And I'm going to add a keyboard sensor like we've done before. I'm going to click in here and press A. And then over here, I'm going to add an actuator. I'm going to add an action actuator. So this works for both the shape keys or for the action editor, which we'll deal with again. And I connect them together. And I'm going to put pulse mode on. So every time, if I hold down the key, it'll just continue doing it. And then I want to go pick that data block that I was using. So I click in here, and there it is called key action, like that. So I picked it. So I want to start at frame one and end at frame 50. And when I do, and if I come up here and start the game engine by pressing P, and then holding down the A key, you're going to see it actually changes 1 to 50, and it just continues playing that over and over again. So suddenly what I've done is now I have keyboard control within the game engine of the shape change that we made within Blender Render. All right. So this is going to be the, form the basis of one of the types of animations that we work with in the game engine. Okay. So now in the next tutorial, we'll continue working with this so just so it becomes more familiar and but we'll work with the action editor and we'll use armatures. We'll review armatures and we'll do the same thing. Okay? And I'll see you then.